Thank you for joining us for the Two Minute Drills, previews and predictions of one of the biggest games of the year, one that a lot of people saw coming a mile away, Freddie. Yeah. Um, and when I say a mile, I mean like in summer. Uh, Los Altos, 8-0, 3-0 in the Hacienda League, going to Charter Oak, 8-0, 3-0 in the Hacienda yeah. League. Number one ranked team in D4, number one ranked team in D6. And, and that's incredible, Aaron, because since they put these new divisions together, we've never had a situation like this where in league, you have two teams ranked number one in the division because they've always been in the same division. Right. So this is kind of unique with Los Altos, number one in D6, Charter Oak, number one in D4. They're both 8-0. And you go back in the summer, you know, I'm more surprised, for me, I'm a little bit more surprised that Charter Oak is 8-0. When I look at their schedule at the, at the beginning of the year, given the players they lost, I didn't really expect them to be here at this point. I thought Los Altos could. When you look at their schedule, mm -hmm. you know, the last two weeks of the year were going to be Charter Oak and then West Covina next week, which I think are going to be their two toughest games of the year. So this is really set up perfectly. These teams are playing so great. Of course, Charter Oak had the, the injury. So, you know, this is going to be a game with the, with the Charter Oak. The way I'm looking at it is where is Charter Oak those last four games since the right. injury against this Charter right. Oak team that's 8-0? Right. That's really what you have to look at. Because that Charter Oak team, before right. the, the, the injury Clemson, to yeah. Clemson, yeah. would have been hands down. I think I would have taken Charter I Oak. I would agree, yeah. Um, we'll talk about this where we go now. Yeah, you can kind of see that, Freddie. You look at the comparative scoring, like when they both played Glendora. Right. Somewhat of a game, Los Altos, Glendora. Charter Oak plays Glendora when they have Clemson, 43-0. Smoke them. Yeah, so um, like you said, you, then you just look at what they've done um, without Clemson, uh, you know, the Chino game, the Diamond Ranch game, the West Covina game, which you yeah. were at. And that was a bit of a struggle. Well, they, they were well, in trouble well, at the well, end. All those games have been, except for the uh, Chino game, which mm -hmm. they were able to, and the quarterback uh, is Takata. Takata. Yeah. He threw for 400 yards in that right. game. That was the one breakout game he's had. Now, last week he took a step back. I think he just threw for over 100 yards in that 20-6 to six win over Diamond Ranch. Right. Um, and except for that game against uh, Chino, those other three games, like you said, have been close. They had to come back in the fourth quarter to beat uh, South Hills. The game against West Covina, that was a that was a three-point game, 31-28, that West Covina really copped up in the fourth quarter. They had a chance to win that game. So right. that's what you're measuring. Is that the charter oak right now against this Los Altos machine and Los Altos has blow, been blowing everybody out here towards right. the end. They haven't had a lot of close games. Right, and it's kind of interesting when you see Los Altos scores, you have to realize that the style that they play, the games are kind of close a little early. Los Altos isn't like a Charter Oak when they had Clemson where they could jump all over someone 21-0 and, yeah. you know, just run away from there. But they grind them, you know, into a, into a pulp, I guess, and eventually end up pulling away for nice margins of victory. Um, when we talk about this game, we're talking about two of the very, very best players in the Valley for Los Altos. Everyone knows him, Tyler Nevins, standout right. running back, as good as it gets. And then for Charter Oak, Brian Castile, the Arizona-bound receiver, um, who also sees time now running back. Yeah. Um, they use him all over. Uh, boy, Freddie, you know, this game legitimately has some of the best top-to-bottom talented teams in the area. Yeah. That's where I think maybe the difference is going to come in. Who has the better 5 through 11 on the field rather than the best 1 through 5? And when you look at this, I don't know who that is. Yeah, well, I think both defenses are playing well, but to me, Aram, it's, it, it's going to come down to the best player deciding this game. I really like Tyler Evans. You think about it, he's averaging I have 194 yards a game. Um, he hasn't had anything less than 150 yards in any game. He scored at least two touchdowns in every game. And one key that I'm looking at, because I was at that West Covina Charter Oak game a couple weeks ago, that was 31-28. Anthony Romero from West Covina was able to rush for 178 yards and two touchdowns. Mm. And they were really able to move the ball to the ground um, better than I thought they would against that Charter Oak defense. So I'm thinking to myself now, if Anthony Romero can do that and, and West Covina can do that against Charter Oak, what is Los Altos and Nevins right. going to do against those guys right. when no one's been able to stop them all year? Right. How much clock is that going to chew? Because Charter Oak is still going to try to win the game through the air. Last week it didn't work. They threw for only 100 yards. They struggled. It wasn't as easy. The week before, it worked. Against West Covina, the quarterback really struggled in that game too. So Charter Oak is going to have to be way on their game throwing the ball. I'm not so sure they can do that, but I do believe that Nevins is going to be able to do his thing because he's done it in every single game this year, and this is the biggest game of the year, 
And he, I just, I can't help but think he's not going to be ready and fired up. They lost the Charter Oak last year. He's not going. He's going to want to get this game. It's his senior year. Right. This is it for him. The flip side of that argument, though, Freddie, is that Roger Lee had the defensive coordinator for Charter Oak, Big Lou for R. They know. They got to do one thing: stop Tyler yeah. and Evans, and let's hope Cody almost yeah. a QB this, from Los Alto. Not going to be a big secret what they're going to do on Friday. There's no, there's no secret that one. Plus, but was there be. needs to be because there needs to be in a game like this. Los Altos can't be a one-trick pony. I'm telling you, Charter Oak will come up with a game plan that will put the clamps on Nevins to a degree, yeah. to a degree. Um, and then you're going to need a guy like Cody almost a quarterback to step up, or Art Vargas their best target outside to step up and make a play here or there. Um, you, you just got to be more than Nevins in this spot, in a CIF championship spot, in a CIF semifinal spot. Los Altos has to yeah. prove they have that. But the difference is, though, Charter Oak, if the QB position is questionable, now obviously Takata isn't Clemenson, but he's been a good placeholder. Yeah, he's he's um, the key for Charter Oak. Takata's Gotta have a if he can game. get the ball to Braddock, if he can get the ball to Castile, get the ball in their hands. Um, I don't think Los Altos has seen weapons like this on the outside. But do they get the ball on the outside? Yeah. Are they able to get them the ball? This is a fantastic coaching yeah. matchup. I know Dale Zaiola doesn't have the CIF championships that Lou Farrar does. Uh, of course, he's been coaching probably about 30, 40 years less, too. Yeah. But the job Dale Ziola has done turning around yeah. this program from where it was and four or five years ago, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Of all the great coaches in the area, you could maybe pick two or three that would have been able to turn Los Altos around. Yeah. Well, is, is there a better defense, though, that Charter Oak's gone up against than, than this Los Altos defense? When you look at a lot of the scores, they've held a lot of teams to single digits. Yeah, that's a they great question, too. Well, yeah. They have Diamond Ranch to right. 13 points. Well, right. I was looking at a lot of their right. like Newport Harbor. Uh, was probably their closest game. They won that by 12. Right. That's a team that's 5-3. Uh, and three. Uh, You know, Glendora scored some points on them, but it wasn't a high-scoring game. Their defense has been good enough. Again, this was Clementson and company earlier in the year. I'd be afraid for them, uh, you know, Charter scoring 30 points or more. But I don't know if they're capable of doing that against Los Altos. But I am pretty convinced. You call it a one-trick pony in offense because it's been a one-trick pony in offense all year long. Yeah. And all year long, <laughs> Nevin no has delivered. Right. He's averaged 20 yards a game. Right. He's had more than 150 in every single game. Right. And in every single game, everyone knew who was going to get the ball. Right. And in every game, he scored two touchdowns or more. But this is Charter Oak. Okay, it, this, it is. That's is what makes this Harbor. a great, great game. And we're going to get into predictions. You know what's tough for me is twice – I've gone against Charter Oak earlier in the year against Northview. And that was, looking back, that was probably a mistake now. Charter Oak uh, just pulled away from Northview and blew him out. I picked Charter Oak to beat Damien. And That's although right. that game was close, it really wasn't. I mean, it was close because Clemson got hurt. If you watch that game, yeah. up until that point he got hurt, that was going to be a blowout. I've been wrong both times. So you've learned your lesson. Third time is the charm, right? Uh-oh. I'm going with Los Altos. I just cannot, you know, it's, it's one of those things... And I and I promised myself after Charter Oak, you know, came you know, after they, they, they put the whipping on Damien, I said, there's no way I'm doubting this team again. One, because that coaching staff is great, and I think they've they've got an it factor about them when it comes to just supporting each other and you know, one unit, one team, and all that stuff that you want to say. You know, the Lou Farrar, is this his last year? I don't know, the three hundred win year. Can they, I tell you after the CIF finals? They've got all that chemistry stuff going for them. So I, I feel like I'm an idiot to pick against Charter Oak, but I think the smart play here, if you're being honest with yourself, Los Santos wins this game on Friday. That's what I'm picking, so, L.A. So you know what to do, Charter Oak students. No, section. they don't need to do you that. You build LA your signs. No, no, no. You know, you, you, they you, don't want to do that this week because I'll bring my own sign. Yeah. And I hate to show them a sign that says, I told you so. But <laughs> this is going to be the week it happens. So um, put your signs down. You'll be wasting your time if you, you know. Well, in that case, Freddie, Freddie has a well-deserved reputation as the cooler. So yes. <laughs> that makes the picking the game easy for myself. I'm to get this um, right. Yeah, he's bound to get it right, but until he does, I'm going opposite. So I'll take but, but Charter. Are you going opposite just to go opposite of me, or do yes, you really think Charter Oak's going to win it? Did you, you know, come, did you come into this room saying Charter Oak's going to win this game? Or are you just going no, to cool the pick? I'll tell you what. I've been thinking about this game probably all season, and ask me a different day of the week, and I come up with a different winner because it really is that close. Yeah. Even as you know, if you have conviction in picking Los Altos, no, I don't have you know, conviction in that. Right. It's gonna, I'm convinced. It's you're, just you're, you're, you know, it's, it's a game, and we're, right. we're asked to pick it. And I, yeah, I expect it to be super close. I don't think any team is going to blow each other out in this game. I think it's going to be 
Just like last week, Northview and San Dimas. That was a great, great game until the fourth quarter and it got away from San Dimas. I expect we're going to go into the fourth quarter and say, God, we've got a game here. Right. Now, what do you think the crowd's going to be last Packed. game? Packed. Yeah. I mean, you know, this I was is as good of a... Charter Oak Damien game, it was absolutely... Charter Oak fans show up. They're, yeah, they what about Los Altos? They do, too. They do, too. Yeah. I mean, traditionally, they both have great student sections. Right. Which, anywhere you go, when you see big crowds, it starts with those student sections. It's become a fad. Like, we've seen that Nogales mm -hmm. has created that atmosphere over there with the student section. Charter Oak has one of the best in Los Altos. From being there last year and other years, they've got a great, great student section. So, and the fans show up. You know, there's yeah. a lot of history yes. with these two schools. These, yes. aren't, this, these aren't schools that have come out of nowhere. We're talking about a rivalry that goes back years and mm -hmm. the Gato for our days. Um, to this Spain is, for our days. To Spain for our days. This is just renewing yeah. a great rivalry. And it's just special. 8 no, 8 no, number one against number one. They won't meet again in the playoffs. So, this is it. This is bragging rights. This is everything. Yeah. They can both go to win CI championships, but this is the game they're going to talk about when they say, who was better? All right. Well, Freddie's got L.A. Um, you know what they say about Charter Oak? QBs fall out of trees yeah. over there. I got yeah. C.O. Um, we'll see what happens. This one is a total toss-up. I mean, it no is. result would really surprise me at all. Great, great environment expected. Two of the very best of the Valley's historic programs going at it on Friday night. For all intents and purposes, the Hacienda League Championship on the line. We don't have to tell you to get out there, but get out there. Thank you. L. Hey.